Let us go to the different clinical types of psoriasis. The first one being chronic plaque psoriasis. Chronic plaque psoriasis is also referred to as psoriasis vulgaris. We will move on to the description of the lesions later on. Next, we have a form called guttate psoriasis. Now, guttate psoriasis is a form which is usually seen in children. There will be history of sore throat or pharyngitis. If you can recollect a little while earlier, I have already mentioned to you that the triggering factor for this is group A streptococci. Group A streptococci is the trigger. So that's why it triggers gutta psoriasis. What is the meaning of the word gutta? Gutta means raindrop. As we can see in the image here, we can see there are multiple raindrop-like lesions over the trunk. That would clinch the diagnosis of guttate psoriasis. The drug of choice for this condition is macrolide group of antibiotics. Macrolide group of antibiotics. Next, we have pustular psoriasis. Now, pustular psoriasis, the most important trigger is sudden withdrawal of systemic steroids. Sudden withdrawal of systemic steroids. Now we understand why we do not give systemic steroids in psoriasis. You try to withdraw, you can develop pustular psoriasis. How do the patients present over here? You're going to have multiple pustules. They're called as sterile pustules because they do not have bacteria within them. You can see in the picture, you can see multiple pustular lesions. These pustular lesions will coalesce. They join with each other to form lakes or sheets of pus. So, be on the lookout for this term, lakes or sheets of pus typically means the examiner is asking you about pustular psoriasis. Now, pustular psoriasis is broadly divided into the generalized form and the localized form. The generalized form is further divided into two types. You have the acute form and the pregnancy form. The acute form is called as von Zumbusch type. It's called as von Zumbusch type. The pregnancy form, which is Pustular psoriasis of pregnancy is also referred to as impetigo herpetiformis. This is also referred to as impetigo herpetiformis. So please remember students, impetigo herpetiformis is also known as pustular psoriasis of pregnancy. And the next form of psoriasis is going to be erythrodermic psoriasis. Now what do I mean by the word erythroderma? Erythro means red, derma means skin. So, in dermatology, when do I use the word erythroderma? Whenever more than 90% of the body surface area. So, as we can see in the image here, if more than 90% of the body surface area is showing erythema with or without scaling and the body surface involved is more than 90%, we are going to be using the word erythroderma. So, this is one type of psoriasis which is called erythrodermic psoriasis. Next, we move on to nail psoriasis, which we'll discuss in a while. And then we have psoriatic arthritis. Now, psoriatic arthritis is classified as seronegative arthritis. That means RA factor is negative. RA factor is negative. And then it is a type of erosive arthritis. That means it is capable of destroying the articular surface of the joint. Now, the classical joint, which is involved in psoriatic arthroputy, as you can see in the picture here, is the distal interphalangeal joint. So, please make a note. The distal interphalangeal joint is the most common joint which is involved. And the worst type of psoriatic arthropathy where you can see it has totally mutilated the joints because of destruction of the joints. This is called arthritis mutilans. Arthritis mutilans is the worst type of psoriatic arthropathy. Most common joint which is involved is distal interphalangeal joint. Now, what is inflammation of the digit called? It is called as dactylitis. And many a times when there is dactylitis in psoriasis, you can get fusiform swelling of the digit, which is referred to as sausage digits. When the entire digit is swollen, we are going to be calling it as sausage digits. Next, we move on to psoriatic arthropathy and the X-ray findings, which is important in ortho as well. So, here what do we see? We see the proximal bone is tapering like a pencil into the distal cup. So, the proximal bone is compared to the pencil, which is going into the distal cup. That's why this is called as pencil 
in cup appearance very important for psoriatic arthropathy next we move on to the clinical features of chronic plaque psoriasis let us take the prototypical picture of plaque psoriasis so how does the patient present so here we are going to have red scaly papules and plaques red scaly papules and plaques you can see the smaller lesions are called papules bigger lesions are called plaques smaller lesions are called papules bigger lesions are called plaques in this picture you can't make out the erythema much because the patient is probably slightly on the towards the darker side so here we can see the multiple papules and plaques and what else do you observe you see the scales which are very important for psoriasis they are called as silvery white scales and the distribution is predominantly over extensor aspect of the bodies so please remember students psoriasis can involve any part but predominantly it is over the extensor aspect of the elbows knees with generally scalp involvement let's now go to the named features in psoriasis three important named features coming up your way one number one we have auspice sign number two cobnus phenomena number three voronoff's ring so we have three important names auspice is a name cobner is a name Voronoff is the name of a person. Let's move to the first clinical sign, auspice sign. Frequently asked in the exam, what do we do? Here you can see what is the examiner doing. He is taking a glass slide. He is taking a glass slide, and what does he do? He is scraping the lesion. So if you take the glass slide and scrape the lesion, this test is called as Grattach test. Now what is going to happen if you take the glass slide and scrape the lesion? You keep on scraping the lesion. First, what is going to come out? You are going to get scales, and there is accentuation of the silvery white scales. So point number one, the scaling becomes more prominent. Number two, you keep on scraping, you will land up in a membrane which is called as bulkelis membrane. That is point number two, and the membrane, if you further keep scraping, it leaves behind pinpoint bleeding spots, and this in total. is called as auspice sign so please keep this in mind students many of you just look at the last point all the three points are important and the last point being pin point bleeding spot so you can see in this image the multiple pin point bleeding spots this is called as the end result of auspice sign let us now look at the clinical demonstration of auspice sign so what are we doing in auspice sign is we are taking a glass slide and we are scraping the lesion so here we can see when we are scraping the lesion progressively the accentuation of silvery white scales are noted these are the very important silvery white scales of psoriasis we are continuing to scrape the lesions till we have reflected the last portion of the scale and once we have reflected the last portion of the scale now we can visualize the bulkelis membrane and once we have visualized the bulkelis membrane we continue to scrape it and we are looking for the end point the end point of this auspice sign is going to be the visualization of minute punctate bleeding spots which is clearly visualized as an end result next we move on to the second named phenomenon called as cobnus phenomena now cobnus phenomena is also referred to as isomorphic response so please remember students iso means similar morphic means morphology so similar morphology lesions what is the definition of cobner cobner is defined as a new lesions of the original disease i have a disease new lesions of the original disease are appearing along the line of trauma over normal skin so please remember the new lesions are developing of the original disease and wherever there is trauma now imagine i have psoriasis on my elbows i do not have anything on my hand if i get a cut here what will happen the same lesions of psoriasis are going to appear along the line of trauma this very unique phenomenon is called as cobnus phenomena so here you can see in the picture so these are the lesions of psoriasis is our psoriasis lesions look erythematous scaly papules and plaques now here you can see the patient had a trauma here so can you see at the site of trauma along the line new new psoriasis lesions you can see these new lesions resemble the old lesions that's why they are called as isomorphic lesions now let us look at the types of cobnus phenomena this is a very important entrance exam question you have three types you have true cobnus pseudo cobnus and there are rare causes of cobnus what is the mechanism of true cobnus phenomena it is immunologic it's happening because of immunologic reasons three examples number 1 psoriasis number 2 lichen planus number 3 vitiligo so psoriasis lichen planus and vitiligo 
three important examples for true Cobnus phenomena. Next, we have pseudo Cobnus phenomena, which happens due to auto inoculation. Auto inoculation means I have a viral infection, I've scratched it, the viral infection gets inoculated along the line of trauma in the form of a line. Two important viral diseases, viral warts and molluscum contagiosum. Some rare causes of Cobnus phenomena. Number one is Darier disease. Darier disease. Number two, Lichen nitidus. This we'll be covering in short topics in dermatology. And lastly, Kaposi sarcoma. Kaposi sarcoma. In this, Basically, I want all of you to focus on two important types, true cobners and pseudo cobners. Next, the third important named feature is Voronoff syring. Now, what is Voronoff syring? All of you can see this hypopigmented margin around the lesion of psoriasis. So, this hypopigmented rim around the psoriasis lesion. This is called as Voronoff's ring. So, to summarize, Ospitz sign, Cobnus phenomena, Voronoff syring. Now, let us look at the different nail changes in psoriasis. Very, very important students to remember this. The first and the most common nail change is pits. So, we can see there's a lot of pitting here. Lot of coarse, irregular pitting. So, these lesions are depressions over the nail plate. Please remember, the exposed part of the nail, this is called the nail plate, under the plate is the bed. The importance is, this is the most common nail change in psoriasis. Most common nail change in psoriasis. And the type of pit here is coarse, irregular, deep. So, all of you, please remember these three words for the pitting of psoriasis, coarse, irregular, deep. And what is the defect here? The defect is in the proximal nail matrix. Now, please remember, nail matrix is the structure which produces the nail. So, here there is a defect in the proximal nail matrix. Next, we move on to the second important nail change after pitting. Now, what do we see here? Let's try to understand. This is the nail plate. And you can see under the nail plate, there's a material here. So, this nail plate and the material below it is called sub, means below. Angwal means nail. The material is hyperproliferating. That's why it's called subungual hyperkeratosis. So, subungual hyperkeratosis. So, accumulation of a epithelium or hyperkeratotic material just below the nail plate is called subungual hyperkeratosis. And uh, because of this material, what is going to happen? The nail plate is there and the nail bed is there. This material pushes the nail up. So, once it pushes the nail plate up, you can see that this connection is getting lost. So, nail plate and nail bed are generally attached. Once there is detachment, this is called distal because the process is happening distally. Onycholysis. So, what is distal onycholysis? Lysis means separation. So, separation of nail plate from nail bed distally. Okay, if the nail plate separates from the nail bed distally, it is called as distal onycholysis. And the most important one, you can see a beautiful oil drop sign, also known as salmon patch, also known as salmon patch. Now, please remember students, this is a pathognomonic feature feature of nail psoriasis. Pitting can be seen in multiple conditions, but oil drop sign is seen only in this particular condition. And here, the defect here is going to be in the nail bed. It's a nail bed problem. Pitting is a nail plate problem because nail matrix gets involved. However, this is a deeper problem. That's why I've highlighted it in dotted lines so that you'll remember the salmon patch or oil drop sign is a deeper pathology. Let's go to some regional variations of psoriasis. This is called scalp psoriasis. 
Now, please remember, students, all of you at MBBS level should remember this that everything which is scaling on the scalp doesn't mean it is dandruff. It could be scalp psoriasis as well. So, many of you may be wrongly using ketoconazole shampoos, wherein the treatment may be different. So, please remember to diagnose psoriasis if you have silvery white scales. It is going to be psoriasis and not dandruff. Next, we have a type of psoriasis which involves only the flexures. If flexures get involved, this is called flexural psoriasis. Also known as inverse psoriasis also known as inverse psoriasis